Hey, what's up, guys? My name is Ashon, and welcome to episode 17 of Game Programming. Okay, so yesterday we had this awesome scrolling um, map, and it looped, and that was all cool. Now, today, what we're going to do is cover inputs. I actually wanted to save this for a later episode, but, um, well, I figured it was time, because I was staring at this map, and I'm thinking, you know, what is it missing? And I'm like, key input, like key controlling, controlling, I don't even know what to call it. Um, all right, so basically the ideology behind this is that we currently move the screen and if I actually just go over here and make that Y, we're currently scrolling the screen, right? Based on increasing these variables. Now what we wanna do is say that, yeah, we now know how to scroll the screen, but this time, instead of it just loop, just increasing every, um, every update cycle, Let's just, let's just tell it to increase every update cycle if a particular key on our keyboard is down, such as, I don't know, the down arrow, or the right arrow, or the left arrow, or the up arrow, or I don't know, WASD, whatever. When we press a specific key, then let's actually increment this, these two variables, okay? So, creating an, an input in, um, in Java is actually really easy. All you have to do is create a new class, first of all, which actually handles all, all our inputs. Now what I wanna do is right click here on rain, hit new and hit class. And I'm gonna type key, board, keyboard, simple as that. And what that's gonna do is handle all of our keyboard events, okay? As well as focus events probably as well. And I'll put this into a, into a, like a sub package of rain, into a package that's just called input, okay? So if I hit finish here, you'll see that it created a new folder for us called input. And this, this is the package that will actually contain all of our input classes. So the first thing the keyboard needs to implement here is actually the keyboard. So implement key listener. Almost forgot it there. Um, so key listener is an interface. And let's just import it first and actually implement it. Um, key, key listener is actually, um, uh, like a is, is an interface. What it does is it listens to keystrokes on our keyboard based on a particular component. So in other words, canvas in our in our case. So any any key events, any keystrokes that we actually like type or that we press or release in our canvas on top of our canvas um, will actually get recorded here. So what happens is if we just get rid of this crap. Again, stuff like override, that's just, that's like a comment kind of, it's not, does not actual code. Uh, it just reminds us, reminds the compiler, that, you know, it's overriding uh, another method. If you, if you see, if you actually um, hold your thing here, you can see that it implements a particular method here. Um, <clears throat> and we'll change this arg0 to e, because k event a, it's just how I roll. Um, all right, so we want to do a few things here. Okay, first thing we want to do is actually create a variable or let's just say an array, okay, of booleans. Pri so public, no, private, private boolean, and we'll make it an array called keys. And basically the idea is we'll store every key we can on the keyboard. And then for each key on the keyboard, it has one of, one of, two, uh, one of two states, right? Pressed or released. So in other words, pressed or not pressed. Um, and we'll, so we'll set that equal to new boolean and I don't know, count the keys on your keyboard. I'm going to say that 120 is going to be enough. Up to you. Common um, same thing, what I, which I do if I don't really care, is just type uh, 65536. That is actually the maximum value of the character array. Therefore, there cannot be more than more characters than that. So that's common choice. 120 is going to be fine, honestly. The other thing I want to do is quickly create variables which actually control our, um, our, our keystrokes. So, uh, well, in other words, control. So, so what I want to do here is create um, public public bull, uh, boolean. Again, I'll be a boolean and up. So what that's going to equal is actually nothing for now. Up, down, left, right. That's all we're going to do now, okay? Just for now. Up, down, and left, right. So those, those states, again, they're public. So these will actually be accessed in, in different classes. Um, this will basically just keep track of whether we, whether we've pressed like the key that corresponds to the up movement of our map, and likewise, you know, for down, left, and right. So what what we want to do now is actually create a a method here, um, public. It's a public method, and we'll just call it update. And again, this is going to be the method that we put into our game game.java's um, update method. 
And this will actually, you know, basically every cycle, it will check to see if a particular key is pressed or released. So what we can do here is actually set up equal to, well, essentially to see if, um, if the keys is, uh, is pressed or not. So what up is, what up can, can basically equal is, um, what up is going to equal is we're just going to see and check if the up arrow has been pressed or not. How do we do that? First of all, we've actually got this key pressed method here, which sort of keeps track of that, uh, keeps track of that. But what we need to do here is in the key pressed method, and again, you can do this before this, you can do it after, it doesn't matter. What, what we need to do here is actually specify, you know, when, when, a, when a particular key gets pressed, let's actually just pop it into the keys um, variable. So a dot, uh, Okay, hang on. So the keys boolean, and then we'll just put key event dot. Um, sorry, e dot get key code, and equal true, of course, because it because it got pressed. Um, and we'll put that into a list. Okay, so let's talk about a bit about these two things. And actually, I don't think. Hmm. Let me just check one thing real quick because um, I'm just scared for something. Um. Something like M would be. It's not telling me what it equals. We might actually run out of um this. Um, out of key codes, we'll see what happens. But basically, what the, what this is saying is in the keys array, right? Let's get let's get the key code. So in other words, let's get the ID of the key that gets pressed, and just let's set it equal to true. So what's happening is we're setting a particular key with the one that we press equal to true in this in this boolean array. And here, when that key gets released, we're actually getting the the ID of the key, ID of the key that gets released, and we're setting that appropriate index in the keys array to false, okay? So what we can do here is say that if, so if keys and then key event dot uh, vk, I don't know, up, or might as well do w as well, I'm just gonna copy and paste this. And I'm literally just gonna copy and paste this a bunch of times for down, left, and right. Um, <clears throat> so right will be D, right? Uh, left will be A, uh, down will be S. And over here, it's obviously going to be down, left, right. Okay, so now that we've created this, um, this whole thing, and basically this should work now, what we can actually do is go, go back into our game.java class and actually add this keyboard uh, class, I guess, into um, into our actual canvas, right? So we do that, it's pretty simple to do that. All we have to do here is actually, first of all, initialize the uh, the class as we would in, you know, in any case. So private keyboard key, right? And we'll actually import that because it is in a different package, it's in the input package. Um, over here, we'll set key equal to new keyboard. All right, and then under that, we're just gonna type add, Key listener, key because key is the uh, the keyboard um, class thing. Now, a few things that you guys are probably gonna mess up. Some of you make sure that you add the key listener after you set key equal to new keyboard, not before. That will result in a null pointer exception. Exception because obviously key is equal to null at this point. It only gets set equal to something at this line. So make sure that is there. Um, other things you guys might mess up. Um, that's probably about it, but that's probably a common one. Okay, so now that we've done this, right, what we can actually do is test this out. So we've added it. Yeah, that the other problem I was gonna say was that people forget to add the key listener and they're like, I'm pressing keys on my keyboard, why is nothing working? Probably because you haven't added the key listener. Um, make sure this line of code is here. And obviously that's a, that is a component um, 
method. Okay, so let's just test it, let's just test this out real quick to see if it works by simply printing to our console um whatever key gets pressed. So in other words, let's just press let's just print up. Um okay. And if we just if we debug this and go over here into our console and again we got this in focus, I can hit up and uh you can see that it does not well, first of all, it's not printing because we haven't added it. My bad. Make sure you go into the update method here and actually go key.update. Another common problem that you guys might forget, make sure you're actually running this method somewhere. Uh, so let's do this again. You can see now we're printing out false. If I uh, push, push the up arrow or push the W key, it's actually printing out true, which means that that key is now pressed and we're actually ready to start um, I guess applying that that data that we now have of the key being pressed or not into our actual game in order to actually control the map. So yeah, hope you enjoyed this episode of game programming. If you did, please hit the like button and I'll um I'll see you guys see you guys tomorrow. Bye.